So today on Six Pack of Questions, I interviewed Joey Jones. He tells us what he's doing in social media, what he's been up to lately, and a whole bunch of other questions like what makes a good photographer. Okay. So, Joey Jones, thanks so much for being here for Six Pack of Questions. So I'm going to ask you six questions and you're going to give the honest answers to them okay. and hold no punches. And okay. yeah, that's it. So go ahead and start by telling everybody a little bit about yourself and then I'll get into the questions. Oh God. Okay. So, um, I'm in my 20th year. Um, I joined PPA in on May 1st, 1995. So I've been around a while. Um, I am currently sitting in my newest studio um, in the back area. Uh, this is the third studio I've built. Um, I I love evolution and the theory of evolution and things and changing. So um, I, I have a hard time staying in one place for more than five years at a time. So I like moving around, keep things fresh. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, I started out shooting weddings all over the country, built my business that way. And then when I opened my first actual studio, which was about a mile up the road here, um, started photographing seniors. So seniors became about 75% of my business. Um, and the rest, I do only a few weddings now, like maybe three or four a year. Um, the rest is commercial work. Cool. Yeah, I think, I think you're really inspirational for me because I hear a lot of people in Facebook groups and forums talk about like, well, I can never shoot seniors because like I can't connect to them because I'm not 20 and stuff like that. And I just see you, oh. I see you because I mean, you don't look like you're 90 years old, but you know, you <laughs> like you just, you just every, every year you just do a ton of seniors and you have such a good connection with them. And it, it, I just think that's an excuse. So. Yeah. So in 2010, I photographed 410 seniors. Yeah, that's amazing. And then, and then I realized, okay, this is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm back. Um, so now I try to keep it at about 150, but I always end up doing like a little more than 200 because I, I'm a shooter. I yeah. love to shoot. So. Yeah. So you're not going to turn away opportunities to shoot. Yeah. And it's interesting too. Like um, I spoke in Connecticut back in back in March, and I did a thing. My talk was on like my theory of evolution and you know why some people have failed and why some people have succeeded over the years. And it was interesting to go back to, you know, back to the CPPA where I was on the board a lot back in the early, early 2000s and to see the businesses that have closed over the years simply because they were, you know, they refused to change and to evolve. And what a lot of people don't don't realize a lot of kids at the school think I'm like in my thirties, but I just turned 50. Yeah. No, I, I definitely thought you weren't 50 when I first met you. <laughs> I so. know. I don't feel 50. It's yeah. just a number. Right. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's all, it's all about the age you act, not the age you actually exactly. are. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm still an adolescent. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cool. I right. test that with my sense of humor. Right. All right, cool. Let's jump into the six questions. Okay. So my first question for you is what makes a good photographer? Cool. Uh, Okay, good for Tyree. Uh, technical proficiency. Um, when I, I, I mentor kids, and when I mentor them, the first thing we do is we work on their equipment. And you have to know your equipment inside and out first before you do anything. Um, because when when you can walk outside and you know your equipment, you know the light, and you can see light, and you know exactly what f-stop and what aperture you need to shoot at, and just on the fly with your thumb, flip your camera to that without having to think about it, it becomes like an auto reflex then the right side of when the left side of your brain works so proficiently the right side the creative side can just flow and and your work will be so much better if you're not constantly thinking about what it is you need to do to technically pull off a photograph um, you marry that with your personality and your ability to relate to people um, and and that's you have to merge those two together so you know it's it's technical proficiency but then you have to be a human being you know if you're photographing people you have to be able to hold a conversation with someone. Okay. Right. Um, I, people have laughed in the past and they said, I can have a, an intelligent conversation with a tree, you know, and it's just, just, I'm a talker. Um, I love people. I'm fascinated by personalities and personality profiles. Um, I think everyone should probably, um, t 
to get that side of it if you're not comfortable with, with people and, and having conversations is go into Myers-Briggs and learn the 16 personality traits and, and learn the people that you're going to be dealing with, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and I tell people, you know, I said it before, I got criticized for saying it once in CPPA, it, if you can't talk to people, then photograph something else. There's, right. there's so much other stuff you yeah. can do in photography. You can do commercial work, you can, you can do real estate. There's all kinds of other things you can do. You don't have to, photo so you don't have to photograph stuff people. You can relate to a human being, please just don't do it. Just, you know, photograph products or something. You know? Yeah, and I want to go back to the first part you said about being, knowing technically knowing what you're doing because my favorite thing yeah. to do is to go to conferences with you and like every morning you have your cup of coffee and you're like, all right, well, I'm going to speak today. I don't know what I'm going to speak about. Um, I guess I'll do some shooting stuff. Um, who's got lights? And like somebody's like, well, I have this. And then like you just grab it and like you look at it for a second, <laughs> you click the test button and you're like, oh, that'll work. Like, and you can, it's because yeah. you just know it so well that's like, just give me a tool and then I'll, I'll, I'll make that tool create a piece yeah. of art. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the thing you, you have. You really have to know, like, okay, so here's a great story. Back when digital first came around and the Canon, it was the D60, I believe, came out. There's a D30 and then the next model was the D60. That's when like digital really started to kind of take hold. Um, <laughs> I remember I had a friend who called me and he said, you know, Milford Camera has a D60 on hold for me. I already have one. I haven't taken it out of the box yet. So I told him I can, I'll give it to you if you want it. And I was like, oh, hell yeah. So I called the store, you know, from from where I am to, to there, to Milford camera is about, it's about 45 minute drive. Okay. And it happens to be right on the um, the Metro North railway line. It's like right next to it. So um, I I just grabbed all my stuff. I, I called them. I said, listen, you know, my friend just told me that he has a camera. He's going to let me buy it. So I'm on my way now. So I drove down there. I drove down to Milford. I walked in, I bought the camera, okay? And I said, well, guys, I'm gonna leave my car in your parking lot for a little bit, all right? I gotta take the train, hop it into New York City. So uh, I did that. Um, I hopped on the train at the Milford train station and took the train down into Manhattan where, you know, cause I get all my stuff at B&H down at 34th Street. So I'm on the train and I read the manual to the camera from cover to cover. By the time I got to B and H, I knew what else I needed to buy for the camera, like the flash unit, the the memory cards, all that stuff. But I also was playing with the camera and I learned how to use it on the train. So I get to B and H, um, I bought cards, uh, I bought a flash unit, some other stuff. On the way back on the train, I read the manual to the flash. Now remember, you know, flashes back then were still pretty advanced, not to the point where they are now. But I read the, the the manual to the flash on the way back. Shot a session that night and it was that's perfect. awesome. Yeah, because, because right, I took time to you, read how how to use the freaking right. Well, yeah, you got to know how to like you got to know how yeah to use the buttons or whatever. But at the same time, like the theory of 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 how you use light or flash is kind of the same. You just have to figure out how that particular model works. Yeah, how, how that works. Yep, exactly. Cool. Um, so then you know I was able to go out and shoot a session. And it was fine. And the guy that let me buy the camera hadn't taken his camera out for like a year because he was afraid of it. Right. Digital. Yeah. No, I hear I hear that a lot for sure. Okay. Next question. Are you ready? Yep. How yep. are you using social media right now? All right. Social media right now. Um, I have an Instagram presence um, and a renewed Facebook presence. Thanks to you, Matt. Um, and uh, my my peeps here at the new studio. Um, my new studio is on one half of a salon building. Okay. So, um, I have built in hair and makeup, like right through the door over there. And, um, I started, I have, a, I've had a Facebook business page for a long time. I just, I post to it every so often. Um, but I realized, um, that, you know, the kids are on Instagram, but the parents are on Facebook. So when, when you're working with seniors, you market to the seniors, but the parents are the ones that have to book the session and do all that stuff. So you have to, there's two touch points right. there. There's two clients, right. really. You have a senior client and you have the parent client. So um, find, I, I've been finding out that um, the Facebook presence on the business page, that's where everyone tends to go in terms of the parents. So um, I have 
Uh, I started a Tumblr. I shouldn't say me. Chandler started. <laughs> right. Yeah, don't 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 take credit for what they're doing for you, Joey. Don't. Yeah, I'm not gonna. No, I will not take. Trust me, I will not take credit. You know, Chandler's like, you know, you can schedule posts on on Facebook. I'm like, really? She's like, yeah. She's like, she's, <laughs> now it's like I'm watching my Facebook just explode thanks to Chandler. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me let me say one thing that I think is really cool that I don't think people realize how great it is right now. The fact that the that the seniors are on one platform and the parents are on another makes life really easy in terms of how you market to them in voice. I mean, it was a couple of years ago when parents and and the seniors were on the same platform and it was really hard to create ads or marketing because you're right. like, okay, now who am I talking to and how do I how do I talk to the kid without the turning off the parent and vice versa? But now with them being on separate platforms, it's actually easier to market on social media which is awesome it's, it's a lot easier now um I, i've learned a lot actually just in the last two weeks alone um my instagram's always been going it's always been you know doing well there's you know the days like how you know there's hashtag days like today's woman crush wednesday mm -hmm. so you know i'll grab one of the kids that i know and, and i'll pop something on there and just you know that keeps the kids engaged on that and, and you know it's all about keeping your face in front of in right. front of them you know with social media and so I, we started a, um, a Tumblr page. Um, so I have a, I have a Google plus page, a Tumblr page, a LinkedIn page for, you know, commercial clients, which also links into my Facebook business page. And, you know, kids have access to my, my personal Facebook page as well. That's out there. So it's a matter of hitting all of them because not everybody's on the same platform. Right. So if you can get all the platforms across, so, you know, there's Buffer that, you know, you can do one post and Buffer will send it out to all the, the different sites and stuff. But um, I found that, you know, Chandler found out that, you know, scheduling the posts on Facebook is much easier. I try to drive everybody to my website when I can, you know, and the next the next thing with, with that social media thing is actually my blog and, and re, getting resurgence going on my blog and well, you know, and, I, and, I was, and I was on your web. Story. I was on your website yesterday, and um, I was showing Nicole your website yesterday, and and it was cool because a lot of your portfolio stuff has a testimonial attached to the side of it, and I thought that was super powerful. Yeah, it's super. It's important, you know. Um, in terms of marketing, like my my whole thing has been has been word of mouth marketing. You, you cannot. There's no stronger marketing out there that you can have for your business right. than word of mouth. Okay. You know, people people will trust what their friends tell them versus yeah. what your let website me, let says. Let me interrupt you real quick. Um, let's see if I can find it real quick. Actually, keep keep going because Seth Godin posted something the other day that was freaking awesome. But okay. um, I don't want to keep the audience like just sitting here watching me Love talk. Seth. But um, okay, he said every fast growing social movement, nonprofit, and brand in the last decade has grown because people have chosen to talk. Not shelving allowances, not coupons, not A-B testing, Super Bowl ads, dancing to people, or Formula One sponsorships. Each, um, each can be a productive tool, but at the heart of real growth is a simple idea. People decided to tell other people. Yeah, it's exact. that's exactly it. That's the way, you know, I grew up old school. Like my, my mom and my stepdad owned, you know, owned a business. They were small business owners when I was growing up. They, taught, they, they were driving mm -hmm. instructors at a driving school. And, and I really learned from my, my stepdad, who was one of those guys who he, he did business on a handshake, right. you know, and, and that's how that's how I was raised, you know, doing business on a handshake and, pre and, and keeping a presence and, you know, um, in my clients lives. And because of that, and being a decent human being with people, right. you know, that, you know, that you cannot you can't put a yeah. price on that. You know, it comes back to you. Um, who was it? Um, Zig Ziglar. You know the the great you know business motivational speaker. You know Zig used to say, you know, um, to be successful, you have to be in service to other people. The more you do for other people, the more it comes back right. to you tenfold in return. I agree. So, you know, word of mouth. I can send out flyers all day. Actually, we're we're putting together a marketing piece now that we're gonna we're gonna mail out. It's like our third one. Um, but really, you know, everybody in my town knows me. You know, and and you know, I built a, a pretty strong reputation. So, yeah, you know, a word of mouth. Like people say, you know, if they don't call them senior pictures anymore. They call them Joey right, Jones right, pictures. Right. I heard that. Yeah. that was kind of funny. Okay, so. next question. So, what was your business biggest business failure, and then what did you learn? That's actually one not, question, not two, but so <coughs> biggest failure. Biggest failure. 
business failure yeah sure um easy actually not not uh not learning the proper formula for how to price your work early on okay back you know i was one of these guys that's like okay how many charge i don't know um how much does it cost me okay i don't know <laughs> right double right. it <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, it's like throwing a yeah, dart, yeah. you know, it's like, eh, it's a little charge, but, you know, um, not learning how to price properly, you know, and, and I learned from Joy Verts, you know, that, that the form that she had, I sat there and I'm hearing all these years later, I'm like, holy crap. Man. I know, right? Doesn't it? When, when you, <laughs> you know, you know, I was close, but, you know, I didn't understand cost yeah. per hour. I didn't, I just knew how much it was going to cost me to actually make that. But I, the whole the, the whole overall, you know, the bigger picture, like how much does it cost to run your business? Okay. And then being able to price from that, I wish I knew that 20 right. years ago, you know, and, and that, that makes a huge difference. So there's that. Um, so not, not knowing that earlier on was, was a huge failure for me, you know? And the other thing too is, you know, as, as many accolades as I've, received over the years you know for my work i never and i don't think this is a failure i don't know how to explain this but i, I never yeah. think i'm good enough you know and i think if i ever got to the point you know i because i i've seen other people's business biggest business failures was they thought they right arrived, right you know and then as soon as they get to that point they think they've arrived and there's nothing else more they can do because they're like yeah. oh, shit now that's when they start to fail miserably. Right. You know? Um, so I never think I'm good enough, but what was one of the failures was I actually let that hinder my um, the advancements in my career, so to speak, was never think I'm good enough, but you know, knowing I was, but not really thinking it. Um, I've always been insecure and in thinking that there's, I can always be better. I can always be better. I can always be better. And I actually kind of let that kind of hold me back a little bit so so that's kind of a failure in that respect not realizing what my talent actually right. was i guess that, make, that makes complete sense okay next question so what is your next move in business well uh i'm sitting in a brand new studio that i still have some stuff to finish up in here um so it's a, a new studio so that's the newest thing now and i'm partnering with um my friends who own the hair salon here and we're gonna start doing more commercial work and moving kind of away from the consumer market and doing more commercial work. Um, the it, I've, It's been a fun run yeah. for me, <laughs> you know, and it's funny, like people come up to me and they're like, how come you're not like working in the city or something? I'm like, it just wasn't my calling. My calling was, you know, photographing seniors and, and families and, you know, a few weddings here and there. Um, but uh, the next move for me is, is um, I'm going to be working on my commercial portfolio going into New York and trying to get a, an artist rep and start doing more commercial like magazine work and stuff like that. Um, so a big part of it was actually building a studio here and uh, getting into doing, um, you know, some hardcore commercial stuff. Now Chandler's sister, Noelle actually is going to, is my new um, stylist. She just, um, she's graduating from high school um, in hairdressing cosmetology at a trade school. But, you know, growing up with her mom owning the salon, I mean, this kid has more talent in her, in her pinky than, you know, most people in the industry have after right. 30 years. So we're going to be helping. I'm going to, you know, working with her to build up her portfolio, build up my commercial portfolio, doing like crazy out of the box, high fashion work, and then you know, get into the city and start doing that stuff. I don't want to do like fashion and the modeling industry. I don't want to do that stuff. I'm more of a, I'm a portrait guy. You know, I've always had dreams of doing like, you know, just, um, editorial portrait work like Vanity right. Fair or something. That's kind of like, that's always been my dream. So, you know, it's time, it's time for me to just do that and get out there, hit that. So that's, that's the next move for me. Okay. Next question. So what advice would you give yourself when you first started? So like, if you could talk to yourself at 25 or however old, I don't know. Um, what would you, what advice would you give yourself now? Uh, go take a business management class. And a business management class that included um, like business law, taxes, taxation, um, uh, just business management in general, accounting. Yeah. You know, um, going back to college to retake the accounting class <laughs> right. that I slept through back in. 
back when I was in college. You know, I wish I didn't sleep through that one. Um, but yeah, the, the business side of it, you know, um, here's, here, here's my pet peeve with, with um, photography schools. Now, I, I never went to photography school, I'm self-taught. But, you know, I, I mentor people who end up going to photography school. As a matter of fact, Morgan's sitting over here and, and Morgan is at Leslie University for photography. And she can tell you too, that one of the things that I've always said was that you need to take business classes and you need to take marketing classes because what do liberal arts, art colleges will teach you to be the best artist, photographer, dancer, sculptor, painter, whatever, but they do not teach you how to earn a living at it. Mm -hmm. I think that, I, I think that's true with Allison too. I mean, she went to the art Institute, she came out and Allison can, oh. Allison can shoot a, Alshon can shoot a tilt shift lens better than anybody in the whole world, but yeah. she didn't necessarily know how to do her own accounting. They don't teach her. Which which art institute did she go to? She went to art institute. Uh, I guess it, I guess it's of Colorado, but the one in Denver. Denver, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. So there's yeah, because the art institutes. You know, I remember taking a visit. I was out in San Francisco shooting a wedding uh, a number of years ago, and I, I went into the, I found the art institute in San Francisco, and I walked through, and there happened to be the senior exhibition going on, so I was like looking at all the work. And I started talking to this kid who was standing there by his work, and I said, I said, wow, what are you going to do from now? From here? And he's like, I don't know, I'm probably going to go work for a studio somewhere or start my own thing. I said, cool. I said, do you know how to, do you know how to like run a business? He's like, no. I said, did they teach you accounting? Did they teach you marketing? He's like, I don't know the first thing about it. Right. I said, you got the, all this raging talent. You don't know what the hell to do with it now. Right. Hey, you're going to try to earn a living. That's, that's like my biggest pet peeve with art schools is they teach you art, but they don't teach you how to earn a living as an artist back when i first started my business i knew i was a great photographer i had people asking me to do work for them but you know i didn't know anything about running a business yeah so i would go back and say before before actually opening a, a studio opening a door or taking your first wedding or whatever it is that you're going to photograph take a business management class yeah learn accounting learn business law learn the taxes in your state you know, learn what's taxable, what's not taxable, you know, um, you know, what yeah, insurance, you know, in, what insurances do you need to be in business? Like people don't realize how important insurance is, especially if you're going to do this full time. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you think is the most important insurance to have as a full time photographer? This is what you, this is how you earn your living. Well, you, I would think it would, well, I don't know. I don't know what to be well, the most important. If you're in a PPA, you automatically have air liability. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's automatic. Well, yeah, no, it's definitely, it's de I, I definitely don't think, I, I would think the most important would not, would definitely not be like equipment insurance. It would be, nope. it would just be like the insurance that covers you, like with your customers and if something happens, what, yeah. I don't know what that's called. Do you guys have disability insurance? No. Well, we probably do. Yeah, we probably do. You're asking the wrong probably, person. Probably You're do. asking the wrong person. What happens, what happens if you're out in a wedding, you break your leg, you break your arm, something happens, you get sick. Yeah. No, I think... You're you're asking the wrong person. I think you that that that's Allison's department. I'll have to bring her in. <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's you know, I wish back before I started, I would tell myself, look, before you even take on a, a, your first client, you know, understand what it takes to, to actually run the business. Get that down cold before you even start. I've been learning as I go. I'm learning more stuff now. I just learned I've been paying taxes on stuff I wasn't supposed to collect for. Right, right. Yeah, I, I know. Like, really, that's not taxable. I've been, I've been collecting tax on it. I didn't know that. <laughs> right, no. That's, that's, I know. That's the world we live in, though. Okay, next yeah. question. Or la actually, last question, Joey. Okay. So, right now, what is your favorite marketing technique? Um, right here, my face. Yeah. It being being present in my clients' lives. You know, I'm. I'm. It's my career is never. My career has never been about just creating cool images. It's always been about the bigger picture and being a part of my. My clients lives um i volunteer to help out with our school with their yearbook i'm not a contractor with the school i volunteer to help them out and you know going i'm a sports fan so i love you know going to the games and, and shooting and you know the yearbook staff needs um you know uh team photos and you know senior stuff you know action shots and stuff i love you know i started out as a sports photographer back in the day when i when i first started learning i was shooting sports so going and doing all that stuff plus you know i'm i'm a huge fan of the theater especially our school the productions they put on are insane mm -hmm. you know, i love doing that stuff so being involved um 
and, and being present and being there and, and you know, not from Instagram or Facebook or my website, but actually physically being in front of my clients. To me, that's that's the most important thing to me. That, so that's, you can't like word of mouth marketing. This is like, I call it, you know, presence marketing. Mm-hmm. You know, just being there, you know? People, you know, stuff happens to our clients in their lives that you don't have control over. Like, you know, you have death in the family or something like that. You know, I change my schedule and I go, you yeah. know, it's, it's, it's being human, but being, being in front of your clients is, is the most important thing to me. Word of mouth, you can't beat it, but if people can put a face with a name and who you are, yeah, it's much better than just, you know, people talking amongst themselves about your business and stuff too. Yeah. I think, I think the, the way I would say that is like, if, if someone's going to shop for a photographer and they even have a five minute relationship with you, that's probably five more minutes of a relationship they have with anybody else. And so they're not yeah. going to book anybody else unless it's unless, unless that five minutes is a terrible relationship. But for the most part, if they have any connection or relationship with you at all, personally, they're, then they'll, yeah. they have no choice but to book you. Why would they go to I a think, stranger when they could go to you who they've known and seen a couple times? Right. And that's, that's the word is relationship marketing. Mm-hmm. That's, that's actually, that, that's what my life has been built on. You know, it's right. relationship marketing, you know, I've, you know, I'll go off and I'll photograph a senior and I'll end up at their house and I end up, you know, like you know, the next week at their grandparents' house having dinner. Right. You know, yeah. it's just, that's just, it's just happened to me all the time. When I, when I first started out and I was trying to learn, um, I had a mentor, my, my buddy, Ralph Panagrosa, and, um, I would, I was helping Ralph, you know, shooting weddings and stuff. He used to get so pissed off at me because we, we'd be at a wedding. I'd just be the assistant carrying around his lights and lugging his bags around. And I would get invited to the grandparents' house for dinner the next day. Right, <laughs> right. Know? And he's like, what the hell, man? It's like, you know, I just, I'm a people person. Right, exactly. You know? So, well, cool. And I'm going to start a, a pineapple stand, too. I think if I get, <laughs> like, put some pineapples out in front door here, you know, I can just, like, it'll just suck people in. You know? <laughs> right, that's hilarious. Yeah. Cool. All right, well, those are your six, those are your six questions. I want to thank you so much for doing this. I know this one cool. will be invaluable for people because you really know your shit. And uh, I'll obviously... Um, I'll put your Instagram and Facebook and website up there so people can see your work because I think your your work is absolutely amazing and super inspirational to Allison and myself. So oh, thank you, yeah. appreciate that. It means a lot to me. Cool. Well, well thank thank you so I'm much. Gonna, I'm gonna go have my own six pack now. All right. <laughs> <laughs>